All right, the way shower to God. Um, I'm going to read something here. Uh, Imagine knowing the true ways of God, untarnished by mankind's misunderstandings and incorrect translations of the Holy Scriptures. Imagine having a personal, loving, trusting relationship with the Heavenly Father. Are you imagining? Yeah. Most people on the planet, most paths out there don't believe that's possible. They absolutely do not believe it. But we know that is possible. And I'll get some vouchers later. You can raise your hands in case it's a bit of a stretch. The first time you hear that, it's like, that's a stretch, but it's doable. And we'll talk about more, more about that, which is pretty cool. A personal relationship with Heavenly Father. So, now how do you have a personal relationship with Heavenly Father? The whole talk today is about God always has a way shower down here in the physical body to help us find our way home. And more than just find our way home to God, why do I say home? Because we were created as soul by our Heavenly Father, we're His children, on the 12th heaven. And that's our home. And we're down here, you know, about 12 planes removed. He's still keeping an eye on us. He still loves us. But there's no way we get home without somebody showing us the way. We love scripture. And I think anything a living prophet writes is scripture. I believe the Spirit of keys is scripture. And I believe most of you do also. But the Holy the Bible is scripture. It's all beautiful. And we go to scripture quite a bit. But Scripture will not take us home to the Heavenly Father. It might prepare us in a lot of ways. It teaches us, teaches us about His ways, some of His ways. But it won't take us home. We need a living, breathing, physical embodiment of the way shower, which we'll talk more about as we go on today. And God always has a way shower to show us what? The way home. He's not a way puller. He's not a way dragger. But if you're receptive and you want his help, he'll share the way home. In the parable of the spiritual journey, which I think most of you just watched, it's that little old guy on the mountain, when you start feeling like somebody's following you or whatever, he's actually leading you, even if it's from behind. That's, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. That's the way shore of God. And like I said in the parable, when you're in the valley, way, way back when that mountain was about this tall and now it's beyond imagination. He was actually with you then, although you weren't aware of it, generally. So we'll talk more about that. So today we'll talk about the way shower, what's it like and how do you develop a relationship if that's what you want. If you don't, he's not going to bother you. But if you want a relationship, how does, what does that look like? And then what does he do for you? And what are, what are your obligations? It's kind of a, a handshake. He'll help you, but you're supposed to do your part. So today I want to talk about kind of some of his responsibilities and then what's expected of you as a seeker. And eventually you go from a seeker to a knower. But right now, early on, as you're going up the mountain of God, and the mountain of God is a great metaphor. This giant mountain we're climbing, you need somebody experienced to help you up the mountain. That's the guy. Like going up Mount Everest is probably safer. You're probably more successful to have a guide that does it all the time. And that's what the way sure is. He's a guide up the metaphor of God's mountain. Okay. It's a very, very tall mountain. And we'll talk more about what's, what's the reward. Why do it? Um, when you get up to the 12th heaven on top of the mountain, actually it's a higher mountain, but in this lifetime, you get up to the 12th heaven where you were created as soul, out of God's Holy Spirit, out of His voice and love, it's all the same thing. When you get up there, you realize, realize God truly loves you and all His children. Regardless of your defilements, regardless of the problems you have, He loves you unconditionally. And Scripture kind of says that, but it's one thing to read about it, and it's another to have Him holding His big golden hand and say He cherishes you. That's a whole nother level of knowing. And it's great to have faith and trust in scripture, which we do, 
but it's a whole nother level to build a foundation in life, an ulti the ultimate foundation. When he holds you in his golden hand and says, he loves you, he even cherishes you. Yeah, it's very doable. We'll raise hands maybe later on that. <clears throat> and once you've uh, met the Heavenly Father and you learn of his true ways and his true love for all, all of his children, life never looks the same unless you have amnesia and you forget, which some people fall off the mountain. That can happen. This mountain's very high, and once you slip, you slide down real fast, all the way down to the valley again. But God still loves you, and He'll send away shore in some some time, maybe many lifetimes later, and, and give you another try. But once you get up on the top of the mountain, the view is significantly different. Life looks different. You view life as just stunning, and I think that's uh, that's one of the rewards of getting up on top of the mountain. You can almost imagine walking through a forest and it's really beautiful, the trees, the animals, rabbits and deer running around. But you get up on a high peak and you look out, you have a wider view, you probably see, you get a better, better lay of the land. When you get up to the ocean, the 12th heaven, the ocean of love and mercy, it's a poetic term because there's a lot of love up there. You see life different, you have a grander view and you see truth at a level most people don't don't recognize. You kind of get the lay of the land, why we're here. Uh, you know, what's it all about? So. And that's actually, that's uh, why are we here? Why are we down here instead of at the ocean, the 12th heaven? If we're still at the ocean, would we need a way shore? No, we're there, we don't need to go anywhere. So we were created at the 12th heaven. And if you don't believe in multiple heavens, which many don't, even though that's incorrect, one heaven with 12 subdivisions, however you want to look at it. But we're down at the lowest part of God's creation. This is the roughest neighborhood in all the God's worlds. We were created on the 12th heaven. Why aren't we there now? And then we wouldn't need a way shore. We'd have the Heavenly Father right there with us. Some scriptures say we fell from God's grace. He was pretty upset with us and made us come down here as punishment down to these low, low worlds where you have karma and all these challenges down here, fear, worry, anger. It's, it's a rough neighborhood down here on the planet, but it's a place we can grow. I don't believe he, God got mad at, us, mad at us and sent us down here. When we first were created, we were babies, baby souls, brand new. Would you expect a two-year-old to be as mature as an adult? Probably not. God didn't expect us to be mature. But he also knew we would not grow and be more mature spiritually if we didn't have the experience and the blessing of coming down to these lower worlds. It's pretty cushy up there. Most of you have been up there. Not much going on. It's always nice. Uh, there's no... There's no resistance. And the resistance down here and the challenges down here is what helps us grow. So my view is we didn't fall from grace. It was actually God's grace that had the way shore bring us down over many lifetimes to these lower worlds, down here to the physical planet. And the reason we're down here, and it was a gift to come down here, is to learn to be spiritually mature. And what does that mean? It means not thinking solely of yourself. You're loving your neighbor, thinking of others, being grateful. At the ocean, we're very mature, and of course God wasn't surprised we're mature, we were just created. But he knew up there we would not grow. We were very self-centered, self-absorbed. We only, th only thought about ourselves. We didn't really think about others much because we're little kids. What do little babies think about much? Pretty much when they're crying, it's not they want to bring you some, it's all about they, got, they want something. It's all about them. And we were little babies. So he wasn't upset with us. It was his grace that allowed us to come down here and get some experience. And it takes many, many lifetimes. One lifetime is soul. You're created up at the ocean as a ball of light out of God's love, out of his voice, the Holy Spirit, the light and sound, a lot of ways to look at this. 
You're just stunning. You don't have a body at the ocean. You're this beautiful ball of light, but you have your own individuality, your own opinions and thoughts. Not when you're a young baby, you don't know much of anything. But as you come down here, soul has one life, but it reincarnates many, many times. God's grace also loves us so much that he doesn't expect us to become spiritually mature in one lifetime. He, he just can't do it. So we have many, many, many lifetimes in physical bodies, but one lifetime is soul, okay? And for those that aren't familiar with it, most people say, this is me and I have a soul. One of the first things we do up here at our retreats is, is take it from a lower level understanding to a much higher level. I am soul that has a body. That's a complete 180 and it takes years to really comprehend that. But we are soul eternally that comes down here and we need something to walk around in. It's like we need a car. So soul comes into a physical body. When the body perishes and wears out, and it's, uh, it's finished, you know, it's run its course, the really you, as the body stays here and deteriorates, we don't need it anymore, God will give us a new body, that ball of light and love that was created at the 12th heaven leaves the body and goes up to some of the other heavens, and God will give you a body that looks almost the same, just a little bit better looking. And then you spend time learning to be mature, maybe on the second or third heaven. And then when it's time, he sends you back down, that ball of light comes into a body. And you get more lessons out of here to grow spiritually and mature. And one of the biggest lessons is to learn to give and receive love. Everything in God's world is rigged to, to teach us to give love and to receive love. And almost every experience we have down here on the planet, if you really dug deep and took the time, it's a lesson on giving or receiving love. And I know most of you that come up here to the Guidance for Better Life, you were very good at giving love, but some of you didn't feel worthy of receiving. It's hard to give a lot of love if you can't accept some. You kind of like a football, you get it, then you pass it on. So it was God's grace, not his wrath, that brought us down to lower worlds. We came down as a ball of light, and it came into a physical body. So I am soul that has a body as, as you are. And if you believe that, and you start understanding that, then soul could have many bodies over many lifetimes. So if you're not comfortable with multiple lifetimes, uh, that's why I'm explaining. If you realize your soul, and it takes a while to grasp that, that has a body, you're not a body that has a soul, then of course soul could go into many bodies. It's like you've all had many cars, but you hop out of a car, you get a new car when it wears out. The body's like a car down here for the earth. All right, so we've had have many lifetimes to become more spiritually mature. And the biggest part of that is to learn to give love and receive love, okay? And the end goal is to get to a point, and this is God's goal for soul, and it's the highest level, the most satisfying level soul can get to. And the happiest soul will ever be is when soul gets mature enough to help other children of God find their way home also, where they help the wayshower. So the fourth commandment is to become a co-worker with the Heavenly Father through his wayshower. So you've got to be pretty mature, mature to help baby souls at whatever level they're at get home. So the ultimate goal of soul is to become mature enough that you can be qualified and ordained by God to be a co-worker for God to help his other children. And you help through the, through the way shower. All right. So that's why we need a way shower. Uh, if you don't know why we're down here, why you want to go home? But our home was at the 12th heaven, where God created us. His grace let us come down here as a gift of love, not punishment. But he knows he needs a way shore to help you get home. And once you get mature enough over many, many lifetimes, you can help the way shore. You can be a co-worker with the way shore. 
and the Heavenly Father help other souls to learn to give and receive love and eventually go home to the Heavenly Father. Okay. So how do we climb this mountain, this metaphorical mountain of God? Um, like I said, scripture and contemplation, meditation are all wonderful. Uh, but it won't get you home. It'll keep you down here. You might be more enlightened, but you're not, you're not getting any closer to God. A book and scripture cannot take you home. You need a physical way shore. And a former way shore that might have helped a lot of souls when, they, when he had the job as prophet or as way shower. If, if that individual is no longer down here in the physical uh, versus a way shower that's ordained by God that is in the physical, which one would probably be easier to learn from? I think most would conclude the one that you can physically talk to, an outer teacher. You can still love a former way shower, in fact, in fact you should, there's a long line of them, and the former way shower has also helped the, the current way shower, they, they're, they're a team. They have the same goal for soul. They both help the Heavenly Father. So all way showers, they're all actually on the same team. So if you have a favorite way shower from a couple thousand years ago, I recommend you do love that way shower and have a relationship with them on the inner, not in the physical for most people, but also have the current way shower. The current way shower and the former way showers, they work together. There's no disconnect in God's worlds as far as the way showers go. And I like that, the parable of the spiritual journey. I think I mentioned going up the mountain when it gets steep and you start needing help. The way shore would show the safe routes. It's, it can be scary and pretty challenging going to the mountain of God and there's all kinds of pitfalls. The way shower knows the pitfalls and the danger areas and will help you around them. It gets you around a boulder that might be ready to run down the hill, down the trail, or he might move the boulder for you. Okay. The way shower offers guidance. We'll get into what the way shower is doing for you. Love and protection. But it's really important he will not drag you up the mountain. That's not his job. If you don't want his help, he'll love you and just stand back. You need to let the way shower know you want his help because he will not violate your free will. God gave everybody free will. The way shower will not violate your free will. So you need to let him know you want his help and his assistance. And if you don't, then he'll back away. That's really important. He's not a dragger up the hiller. He'll show you the way, he'll point the way, but you need to do some walking yourself. If you need to sit down and rest, he'll sit down and rest with you but he's not gonna drag you up the hill if you don't want the help. Sometime he might carry you for a little while if you ask to be carried. But being receptive is gonna be something. I'll talk about that's really important. 